days. I am very grateful to have with me tonight my wife. I wonder if she can just stand and turn around. Maria Victoria, she is going to minister the second half of tonight. And we will be here for two days. Um, God has really equipped us to, um, to go around the nations of the world and see entire churches and denominations get activated in soul winning. And so um, that is what we're going to see this weekend. Before we continue, I want to can we just play that video for a second, please. stadium events that you've seen was in Panama, we put up, I think there were three stadium events in that, in those, in that clip. Uh, we, we, by the grace of the Lord, um, we put up that event, uh, those events from scratch. It was a natural, it was a national movement in the last, uh, the big stadium event, Todd White and Dan and, 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 um, and ministered alongside us. And we've seen God just do tremendous, tremendous, tremendous um, work in, in, the, in the heart of the nation of Panama, in the heart of his church. I believe that, I just looked at stats and I saw, again, just so few Christians are engaged in active soul winning. And I think it's key for us to understand why that is so important and also how easy it is. Now, God has given you an amazing pastor. Yeah. This guy, oh, man. this is all zeal, all fire, yes. but also wisdom and knowledge that God has placed. Yeah. He's, he's not just fluff. And so God has given you a shepherd who would lead you in the pathway Amen. of his commands. Yeah. Um, this weekend, we pray that out of the four sessions, there will be an activation. And I want to just draw your attention to this one thing. In Matthew 9, when Jesus sees the crowds, this is after he's leading people to, to himself, right? He's, he's healing them, he's delivering them, he's setting them free. The Bible says he saw the crowds and they looked like sheep without a shepherd. It's the first time that Jesus looks at the lost through the eyes of a pastor. Mm, that's good. He didn't say, oh, let's go and range a crusade. <laughs> he said, those people, the sinners, are sheep without a shepherd. Put it another way. The people around us 
The people around in Patterson that doesn't know Jesus are sheep without the shepherd. They just don't know the shepherd. And the Lord is looking for people to go and introduce Jesus to them. And many of them will accept him as Savior. Once we do that introduction. And so I want to go right to the foundation today. To talk about not just the what of evangelism and the how of evangelism. But I want to start out by talking about the why of evangelism. The why is the reason, the motive, the motivation for doing anything. In life, I've read somewhere and I've heard many people say this. If you can have a strong why, the what and the how doesn't matter. Amen. You will find a way. Yeah. You will find the how because you are already internally motivated. Yes. Your why is strong. And I want to show you, before we look at our why, I want to show you out of Scripture God's why. Because once we understand this, it will shut up those who are trying to receive salvation through religion. It will, it will completely flatten and obliterate every person who's trying to earn salvation through good works. Once they understand this, and you understand this, and you present the why of God, the way He does in the Bible, I believe there's not one person that will not say no to Jesus. Are you ready for the why? Amen. Yes. Amen. And so the Bible makes it very clear what is God's why. God's why for saving the human race is love. And so the central theme that reverberates throughout the Bible, serving as the foundational and the primary motivation behind God's plan of redemption is love. It's the pro there are many other reasons, but this is the primary motive in the heart of God. Yes. That He wants to impart in our hearts and every other reason or secondary reason why He wants you and I to be a soul winner flows out of the primary reason, yes. which is love. Yes. Amen. God's love is selfless, it is sacrificial, it is unconditional, it is a love that far surpasses human comprehension. And this love cannot be earned and it cannot be deserved. This divine love fuels God's desire to reconcile humanity to himself, rescue sinners from the destructive consequences of sin by offering eternal life yeah. through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bear with me, I'm going to stay within the framework of my notes because that will help us to stay on track because this is really uh, 8 to 12 sessions that we're trying to cram into 4. John 3.16 Poignantly reveals the motivation and it says, For God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son. I heard somebody say that you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Amen. Amen. When you have love, love always finds a way to give. Mm. Listen to Romans 5, verse 8, for those who are taking notes. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Get that into your heart. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 45. But because of his great love for us, 
God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. The question is, because I've heard people ask, did the law come before grace or did grace come before the law? And it's important to understand that. And I want to answer this tonight. When did God choose, when, when did he choose to demonstrate this love? That we are talking about. When did he choose to demonstrate his life to the human race? He gave us his son. On the cross. Before the foundation of the earth. Once we understand this. It will bring such a solid revelation and a foundation in our hearts. That you will know this love that has compelled God. Is the same love that will compel you. So when did God choose to love the world in this way? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The answer is, God decided to do that in eternity. Mm. Ephesians chapter 1, let's go there, verse 4. If you have the Bibles, I'd like you to put it up on the screen. I'd like you to read it. Um, This is kind of part preaching, part teaching. It's good to be active in the word, the word in, 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 in writing in scripture, so that we know what God has given us. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Sometimes I find that people read over this, and you cannot, because it's part of the revelation of our inheritance. Amen. For he chose us in him. Before the creation of the world. To be holy and blameless in his sight. Watch this. Next one. In love. There it is. He predestined us. Means there has been a destination. Pre means before the destination. So he had a destination for us. And in love, you already said, I am going to have a destination before you actually get there. I will already decide to give you that destination. Right. You will get to the destination in my heart and mind before you physically get there. I will already put you there. Praise God. You have been destined in Him. Yes. Predestined in Him. Because of the fact that God is omniscient, He knows everything. So he knew that that day you will make a decision so he could go into the future. And so he said, based on that decision that I'm seeing he will do, I'm going to choose them and predestine them to be in Christ. So he says, according to the pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace. These are all powerful words which he has freely given to us in the one he loves. In Him, in Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Please listen. He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, here it is, which He purposed, which He, uh, sorry, according to His good, which He purposed in Christ To be put into effect, now listen to this, when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Yes. So there are two realities here. There's a reality that plays out in time and there's a reality that plays out in eternity. And so God's purpose, God's will, has been established in eternity. And the way he does it, he takes that which he has already decided, which he has already fulfilled, which is already settled. And with the cooperation of the will of a man and a woman, he works that out in time and space 
But forever, O oh Lord, your will is settled in heaven. So watch this. Revelation 13, verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation 13, verse 8, unveils the astounding truth that Christ is the Lamb slain. Some says from, but the reason says before, because it means it's separated from, that word there in, in, in Greek means it is separated from the foundation. It is before yeah. the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Watch this. Christ is the Lamb slain from the foundation or before the foundation of the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. Yes. To 20 it, refer, it affirms this eternal decree. It says he was foreordained, speaking of Jesus, before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in the last times, in these last times. Thank you. So again, the reality of Jesus, chosen before the foundation of the earth, and then manifested in time. Yes. So many people, when we talk about the, uh, sharing the gospel, we say, well, Jesus died for you 2,000 years ago. And that is true. But that is the physical reality that is superseded or preceded by a greater truth that God established in eternity. Yes. Please understand this. So I want to I want to walk this out so that we understand the why of the gospel. So God is described as omnipotent, which is Powerful. Talk to me. All powerful. All powerful. He's described as omnipresent, which means everywhere. He's present everywhere. And he's described as omniscient, which means he's all knowing. So, a million years, a billion years, 10 billion years before. Fast forward into the present. Fast forward 10 trillion years, human years, into the future. All of that space in terms of time and distance, for God is always now. Amen. He's the great I am. He does always live in the present. Not only is he always the great I am, so the eternity for him when it's past, present, future, is always now. Amen. There is nothing outside of his reach. Number two, the knowing part, everything that has happened before, remember he stands outside of time. In fact, God stands outside of eternity. If he can create time, he must be outside of time. Not only that, all knowledge in the universe in the heavens and the earth, God knows it all. He's all knowing. Oh, yes. A day from, from now, a week from now, a month from now, ten years from now, a hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, God knows it all. Yes. Every detail about your life. Yes. In fact, he says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Yes. In fact, I wrote about you in my book. Oh, the number of days, Psalm 139. Before there was one, I have a fire on you. And all your days from the womb to the tomb, I have a purpose and a plan. That if you would align with that, your tomorrow, your next week, your next month, your next year, it can just drop from heaven and you can walk in the ways of the Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so, God being omnipresent, omnipotent and omniscient. Stay with me. And I'd like to invite you to go to a meeting in eternity between God the Father and God the Son. 
and the Holy Spirit. Eternity before the foundation of the world. They decided, let us make a being called man. We want this being to be a shadow of us. To be a reflection of us, to bear our image. We will create this place called earth. And what we want is the way we govern on the earth, the way we are in or the way we are in the heavens rather, the way we govern in this realm, we get to create a little realm for mankind. And we get to create them in our image so that what is on the earth will be a reflection of heaven. Both in their being and their doing. The key is that they remain connected. Amen. So, my image, my shadow, doesn't think, it doesn't have to lean on its own understanding, it doesn't need a will. All that my shadow has to do is reflect me. That was that's the purpose. So if I go to the right, my shadow follows and it just goes to the right. Yes. If I decide to lift up my right hand, my shadow better lift up its right hand. Okay. Otherwise there's gonna be a problem. <laughs> it will be reflecting someone, but when I lift up my right hand and the shadow is lifting up the left hand. Uh -oh. It's reflecting an image, but it's not me. Yes. Life on the earth, in terms of God's divine design, has been heaven is reflected in the earth realm, both in being and in doing. That's 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 the divine design. That's a setup. So in eternity, God the Father. God the Son. Gracias, my more. I need one more chair. I need three, three men to come and sit here. Three men, just sit in a circle. No, that's fine. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They decide in eternity. No earth, no foundation, nada. We are going to make this being in our image and in our likeness. They are they setting up the master plan. Now remember, God is omniscient, he's all-knowing, and he's everywhere present. When they look, where's Adam? Looking for a handsome guy. Oh yeah, there he is. Where are you? <laughs> And so they see, remember, remember now, God lives in eternity. But a thousand years or a ten million years, for him is like right now. He doesn't have to wait for time to pass in order for him to get there. He just steps into, he's just, he just in time. So the moment they decide we're going to make man in our image, they look at this being and they say, Whoa, do you see us? They see the reflection of the Godhead for the very first time as if they are looking in a mirror. And inside of that man, where's your beautiful wife? Even though later, God pulls Eve out of Adam. Yeah. All right? You can just sit there first. Okay. Uh, no, in fact, if I stand behind you, okay. and just like close, like as if you're in here. <laughs> when 
God says, let us make man. He says, let us make mankind. It's not the male man. It is the male and female species. So when God sees Adam, God the Father, God the Son, inside of that one body are two spirit beings, Adam and Eve. I don't want to go too deep on this because that's not my focus. So, in order, f- so this one being represents the image of God in totality. God's purpose is for this being to reproduce His image in the earth. But in order for that to happen, it has to be reproduced physically. So, God takes what is already on the inside of Him. He pulls Eve out after he puts him to sleep, you know, the whole thing. And now, all of a sudden, there are two physical bodies with two spirits on the inside. This is how it looks in the garden. They are looking into the future and they're seeing this. But in the spirit, when they look, why don't you stand behind again? In the spirit, I want you just to turn around so we have a 360 degree kind of view. Like these guys are. Stay behind me. Like, 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 you're, okay. like, like you're like on a 360 degree okay. little camera like a thing. Like this. Oh, yes, baby, come on. Move those your hips. So, in the spirit, Adam and Eve, two beings now, looks like this. One being. In the physical, what you see is this. But in the spirit, there's only one man. One God. In fact, when God pulls, this is in eternity, this is our master plan. When he pulls her out, immediately we would make a statement, for this cause, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become all right, now no, no, remain there. <laughs> so all of this, remember when God thinks it, it's already done. Yes. It's outworked in time and space. But when God is, thinks a thought, His thoughts are not our thoughts, His ways are not our ways. When that thought is, leaves His mouth, Isaiah 55 says, His word shall not return void or empty or barren to you. But accomplishes that for which he sends it out. So now they are releasing this truth of a being. The father and mother of a race. A species, a God species. Whoever God looks over the face of the earth, he will see a reflection of himself. But in eternity in this meeting, while they're looking at this, God the Father begins to weep. Because he's looking into the future. And he's seeing this being called man who's supposed to be a reflection an image of him whatever he sees he does yeah. I'm a reflection of heaven on earth both in my being that is God's job because he created me like that he creates you in his likeness so you already have that going for you but now the doing part is Jesus later comes and he says, I only do that which I hear and see the Father does. He says, let me get this thing, this chaos here on the earth. Let me get this straight. When you pray, pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let this be a reflection of that. Let me bring this thing back. In fact, Hebrews 1 says, he is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation, right? So, God the Father is looking at this and he's weeping. Because he sees into the future 
And this amazing being created in the image of God are going to turn their backs, just turn your backs on, on them. Like, can they turn your backs to them, to God, to the triad? Sorry, I wasn't clear. Separating and no longer reflecting the image. God foresees that he would walk into the garden and say to Adam, Adam, where are you? It wasn't a geographical question. God wasn't asking, are you under tree number five or the pine tree or the oak tree? No, it wasn't a geographical question. It was an identity question. Wow. Where are you? I'm looking at you and I don't see my image, my reflection anymore. What happened? So God is weeping in eternity. Because now, the part of God as church has to kick in. The wages of sin is death. God made it very clear. And this is now, remember, sorry pastor, I'm all over the place. <laughs> remember now, this is in eternity. The earth has not been created. But when he thinks it, when he speaks it, he is as if it is. Yes. That is how he operates. In fact, Romans 4, 17 says, God is the God who calls things which are not as if it is. Yes. So he changes the name of Abram. The guy doesn't even have a little squirrel as a pet. But he says, I'm going to change your name to Abraham father of many nations. He calls the things which are not as if it is. Yes. And in his eyes it's done. So when he looks at this God is weeping. The judgment now, God as judge has to arise. Because his justice Demands that sin has to be punished. Yes. And the wages, the punishment of sin, is death. So he's weeping as he looks at this being created in his image, supposed to reflect his glory and his nature, whom he now has to kill and to destroy. And the dilemma in this meeting as they look together, because at this stage, Jesus the Word and, and God the Holy Spirit all are crying when they see this. And the question is, how can I punish them? Mm. And at the same time, have mercy on them. Yes. I have to destroy them because they're guilty. But I love them so much. Mm. So in eternity, the dilemma is, how does God reconcile His love and His mercy with His justice? So that He doesn't violate His being. The Holy Spirit opened up His mouth and said, what if we can find a substitute? Would that satisfy the judgment and the justice of the judge and all the earth and of the heavens? Would that satisfy if we can find a substitute? Meaning, if we can find somebody who we can punish in their place <laughs> that can exchange places with them, that can be the substitute, because they have to be killed now. But is there not a substitute that we can say, okay, you guys, move to the side. We now have a substitute that can stand in, that can take their place. So the Holy Spirit, thank you, the Holy Spirit is asking that, please come back, the Holy Spirit is asking that question in this meeting in eternity. 
but then he answers it to himself after a moment of silence. He says, I searched everywhere, high, low, far, wide. There's no one. And Jesus, the word, yes. opened his mouth and said, Father, what if I become a substitute? What if I become a man? And I become the substitute and exchange places with them? Because just like all of creation, all of the nations of the earth are inside the seed of Adam. is inside of him as he's standing there so when he sends all of his descendants become who he is yeah. he reproduces after his kind but at the same time when Jesus says I will become Hallelujah. I will take pl his place he is the creator of the heavens and the earth all things has been created by him and for him and through him and he says I will come and I will exchange places with them you can go. What if I become their substitute? Would that satisfy your wrath? And God says, absolutely. Yes. In that moment in eternity, before the foundation of the world, before the earth was created, before Adam was formed, before Eve was formed, before they even committed sin, in eternity, the fate of Jesus was sealed. In that moment, he became the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. And in that way, God's mercy triumphed over his judgment. His love won out. Because he, Jesus is God. God is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is God. And God is the Holy Spirit. And one speaks, everyone is speaking. And one goes, all of them goes. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, to think, to 21, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. So this is the point. The why of God has been established in eternity. I'm going to save this human race because I love. When I could just obliterate them and kill them and start all over. It's only two people. And an ice and a fire died. They got a bad deal. <laughs> you got many other people in the Bible that also touched the war and he died. Cora pulled earth, opened up, swallowed him and his entire family. They died. Gajasha said, I want to show the world. I want to show sins. A part of me, gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love. Yes. The why of God for sending Jesus to die on the cross was not decided 2,000 years ago when the Romans knelt into a tree. It was decided and preached in eternity. Yes. In fact, Galatians chapter 3 says that the gospel was preached to Abraham. Yes. Amen. And he was sacrificing Isaac. Yes. You'll see the picture of God the Father when he oh. sacrificed his only begotten son. Just as they walked for three days to that mount, so Jesus walked for three years to the mount that God would show him. 
Just like Abram put the wood on the back of his son Isaac, so God took the wood of the cross and put it yeah. on the back of his son Jesus. Yeah. When Isaac turned around and said, Father, everything is here, where is the lamb? He said, God will provide himself the lamb. Yeah. And it says that the original, and on this mount, the sub translation says, it will be seen, but the original says, he will be seen. You go to Jerusalem today, the very mount on which Jesus died is the very Mount Moriah on which Abram sacrificed his son Isaac. But the gospel was not just preached to Abram, it was preached in eternity. And this is the deal. Before there was a problem, God already put the solution in the life. Before he created the earth, before he created Adam, before he created Eve, before they sent, Jesus was already waiting as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So here is the deal. That love, that grace, that kind of mercy, that gift of salvation has got nothing to do with you. You cannot earn it. You cannot deserve it. You cannot will for it. Because you weren't there. You were not in that meeting. <laughs> Before the foundation of the earth, God already decided to give you a gift. You were not around. So how can you earn and deserve something Retrospectively, that was given to you in advance when you were it was just a gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, as somebody, I mean, religion is so stupid. <laughs> That's why the Bible says Satan has deceived the mind yes. of the world. Why was paying sacrifice not acceptable? Because from the point, remember now, please see this. Let me backtrack a little bit. I'm giving you the basis, the big picture of the gospel. Because when you go out there and you have this revelation, you are so aware, you are so overcome, you are so compelled by the love of God. Jesus, remember, this is what you need to understand, and just say it again. Nothing of God, you can write this down, nothing of God, nothing of his will, nothing of his word, nothing of his purpose, nothing of his plans, nothing of his kingdom originates in the earth realm. Because the earth is not the realm of creation. In God's world of duality, the dual existence between heaven and earth. The way God has set it up, everything of God is created in the heavens, in the realm where he dwells. It's communicated to the earth through his word. But what is built here what is created here has already been created in the heavens. So this is only a reflection. You see that throughout scripture. Moses, I want you to build a tabernacle from the Exodus 25, 27. You're not going to invent this thing. I don't want your plans. I don't want you to. You are all, I'm just using your hands. Like that David writes Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house we labor in vain. So he's saying, I want you to build on the earth what has already been built in the heavens. Yes, yes. Yes. Angels 
angels, you're going to make a Shekinah glory. You're going to make a, an Ark of the Covenant. You're going to make angels and all of that. But they are a reflection. They are a shadow of the real deal up there. So I'm saying to you this for a reason. So Jesus is the Lamb slain in the heavenly realms from the foundation of the earth. Before God's throne, before the human race is created, Jesus has already died. Not he was going to be slain. He's the lamb slain who has been slain from the foundation of the world. In other words, it's already done. It must now manifest in time. Watch this. So when God establishes that in the heavens, he now takes that reality and shines the reflection or the shadow of that in the earth realm. The first time that is done is in the garden of Eden. It's done twice then. Can I go? I want to show you just the depth of the gospel. How much thought God has put into this. Because he's after an inheritance in the earth. He says, ask of me and I will give the nations to you as an inheritance. We and those who are out there in the world are part of his glory. Yes. Do you know why out of this amazing Isaiah 6 encounter where he's, where he's seeing the angel and I heard somebody say, of all the things that they can say about God, the only thing that comes out of the mouth is holy, 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 holy. holy. <laughs> but you know why God out of that encounter, he could have just said, I said, oh, just stay here, bro. just stay here, just chill, just stay here for another six months, man. Just, I just want you to do nothing, just stay in my presence. No. There is no way that you can have an encounter with God like that and stay barren. Come on. Intimacy produces fruitfulness. Yes. So while they are singing holy, 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 and there is a song in the heavens before the throne of God, the song is incomplete. Because there is a song that cannot be sung by angels. It can only be sung by the, the redeemed. Oh, hallelujah. Those who have come from every tribe, every nation, every tongue. Revelation 7 talks about it. 9. They stand before the throne and they sing a song. Salvation belongs to our God and to Him who sits on the throne with glory, blessing forever and ever. But in Isaiah, he's only seen the angels. And the picture is incomplete. God's glory is incomplete. Jesus says you want to bring glory to God. It's more than a song. It's more than words. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. John 15. And show yourself to be my disciples. God's glory gets amplified and expanded. When not the territory of real estate in the earth is conquered. Like the Crusaders and those people back in the day. But when the real estate of the hearts and the minds of men can sanctify to Jesus. Yeah. Yes. 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 And so the song is incomplete in the heavens. And so God will always, out of that Mount of experience, you see it in Matthew 17. He takes three of his disciples on the mountain. Moses appears. Elijah appears. The, the law of Moses appears. Elijah represents the prophets appear. The law and the prophets. And then the voice of God comes. So a matter becomes established by two or three witnesses. So Moses speaks the law. The prophet speaks. And God speaks. This is my son. In whom I'm well pleased. And they are in this glory. And Peter says, oh God. Jesus, let's just stay here. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna build, like do an Airbnb deal right here. <laughs> People can come up and they can stay here for three weeks and just, like, just soak, you know, just like the glory. <laughs> and Jesus says, oh. "Hallelujah." 
Let's get out of here. That's right. That's a purpose for the glory. Yeah. It is to heal the sick. Hallelujah. It is to cast out devils. Yeah. It is to set captives free. Let's go down. There is an assignment that is waiting. The glory of God produces presence and power yes. to set captives free. Yes. Hallelujah. So there's a man whose son is the devil. These devils are trying to kill him, putting him into, into water, drowning him, and into fire. I've got to go set him free because these disciples they haven't learned the lessons yet. Yeah. And so out of that mountaintop experience, holy, 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 he says, you have to come down because I'm asking, whom shall I send? Mm. And who will go for us? Yes. I'm looking for my reflection. I'm walking up to Adams in the earth and I'm saying, where are you? I hope to see my glory back in your face. But it will not happen unless I hear an answer from somebody who says, Here I am. Sing. Oh, help us. So let me say the big picture, and then we're going to have the play. So in the Garden of Eden, see God's amazing wonder. He's preaching the gospel. It is now it's been established there. Jesus is the Lamb slain. He said, I will go and become a substitute. It's established already. So now it unfolds in time and space. He creates Adam. He creates Eve. They actually, Eve actually now listens to the deceiver and she takes off the fruit. So watch this. In that moment that she partakes of the fruit, she dies spiritually. She becomes a sinner. Right? Jesus, God said, the moment you eat from it, you will surely die. So in that moment, Adam is standing next to her. She partook of that fruit, so she is a sinner. Not only separated from God, but she's separated from her husband. He hasn't taken it. He's going to do that in a few seconds, but he hasn't taken it yet. So in that moment, Adam is holy and pure and righteous. And she's a sinner. In that, God is prophesying the gospel. Romans 5, 1 Corinthians 15 says, Jesus is the last Adam. Mm. Yes. So, in order to be reconciled to his wife, he who knew no sin, Woo. ate of the tree. And became sin. And in that, for the first time, God is prophesying the coming of the last Adam. He will become sin to rescue his bride. Oh my God. That's the first time the reality of eternity of Jesus the Lamb slain makes landfall in the earth realm. But it's not the only time. I will show you this because it's important when we share the gospel. When we share, it's called the good news. It's a good news for a reason. Amen. And these people are coming trying with all their silly, foolish, stupid ideas. Trying to earn God's free gift of salvation. It doesn't compare. In the face of the extravagance uh, and, and the riches that Paul writes of his mercy and his grace. When Paul saw this, he was blown away. And that's why I believe it's so important that we know why. It's love. But I will show you just a few more. The second manifestation. Remember, the earth is the realm of manifestation. Heaven is creation. Jesus is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. The second time is when Adam and Eve, when both of them partook of the fruit and they realized their eyes open and they are naked and they try and make coverings for themselves. Remember of leaves. How much time do we have? Come on, preach. Come on, preach. They're making coverings for themselves, right? Which is a representative of the work of their hands. Watch this. See it represented right there. Religion is man's attempt, his works, him trying to cover his own shame, his own nakedness, his own sinfulness. 
is represented in that act of Adam and Eve. Yes. Because they did not know about Jesus, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth here. So God steps in and says, no, 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 no. That's not good enough. Take off that work of your hands. No amount of work that you do trying to be good, trying to cover your sin, trying to cover your shame is adequate enough to cover your nakedness. It's a work that I will have to do and I have already done it in eternity. I've already given Jesus. Watch this. This is now way after the Sabbath, the seventh day. God already had the third day. He created the animals. There was a lamb that was already crazy. Yes, yes. Before the problem was there, he already had the provision for the covering. And so he goes and he takes the lamb and he kills it. And now for the first time, the shadow is reflecting the reality. A life for a life because the blood the life of that animal yes. of the, is, in the, is in the blood. Yes. The soul of that is in, is in the blood. Yes. So he kills the lamb. The evidence, a life given for a life. Adam and Eve were supposed to be on the altar. They are taken off. Watch this, how the gospel is demonstrated in the earth now. God takes a lamb and he puts the substitute there. And it's a shadow of the reality of Christ the Lamb who one day when John the Baptist will see him yes. he would say behold the Lamb of God Hallelujah. who takes away the sin of the world yes. but the first reflection the first shadow God gave in the Garden of Eden when he killed that Lamb yes took the blood and showed them there is the evidence that a life was given. That's the evidence. The, the, the blood speaks yes. that there's a substitute that died in your place. You're free to go. Amen. And then he takes the skin which represents the robe of righteousness. Watch this. On the cross they took that robe on Jesus, he stripped him yeah. naked. Why was that important? Because he exchanged places with us. Yes. When Adam and Eve sinned, they were naked. They are full of shame and full of fear. Yes. So that we can be covered yes. by the robe of his righteousness. Yes. Every time from that moment onwards, whenever an altar is built in the earth, it had to be a shadow of the reality of Christ the Lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. If what was on the altar, the altar could be made of gold, diamonds. They can have priests there wearing whatever. The best outfits. But if what's on that altar is not a reflection of Christ, on, the Lamb, that sacrifice is not acceptable. King tried it. Yes. He brought zucchinis and tomatoes, the work of his hands. And that is what religion is. Yeah, yeah. And the message is, Cain, no amount of self-effort can make you earn or deserve or work for the salvation that I have already decided in eternity to give you. All that you must do is accept it. Yes. And so for 4,000 years, God erected altars in the earth. He raised up priesthoods that would be a shadow, a reflection, until in the fullness of time, Christ, who was already slain before the foundation of the earth, can come 
and fulfill the deal that he made with God in eternity. Amen. Yes. To be the Lamb, to be your substitute. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Where is boasting? Where is works? Where is our self effort? It's got nothing to do with us. He has everything to do with us yes. because God loves us. We are the object of his love, of his yes. obsession. Yes. The world out there, the object of his obsession. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I walked into the um, when I was back in Africa, I used to go to hospitals all the time. And we train people to, to get activated, to take them in. Because that's the easiest, because people maybe die or just in sickness. And, you know, they were open. Yeah. So I came to this gangster. He's like rough. You can see he's just tattooed in this. I gave him this download like in two minutes. I said to him this, I said, bro, don't be stupid. Sign on the dotted line. This is a deal too good to be true. He said, okay. <laughs> what are you trying to do? You want to add something? You want God to like you more? There's nothing you can do. He's already decided to give you the gift. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah. You only. So he says, for those who have received him, yeah. he's given the right to be called children of the living yeah. God. What must you do? Oh, you're telling me there's nothing I was like, Five Hail Marys, Ten Hail Marys, Our Father, Go to Church, Stop to No, no, no. Just believe. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Believe that God wants to be so good to you. Yes. It's so simple that a child can understand it. Yes. And so the why of God is His love. That is what moves him. The darling of heaven stripped of his glory yes. becoming man and saying I'll exchange places with them I, I heard read someone somewhere that he, he paid a debt he didn't owe because yeah. right. yes. we owed a debt that we could yes. 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 Thank, you. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus so if we have that revelation that the world can never say, say you cannot deserve this. You tell me I must I must stop smoking. No, 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 no. None of that. Come to Jesus just like you are. So let me read you one of the most incredible scriptural expositions of the gospel. Which 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 completely Rocked my world when I first read it years ago. Second Corinthians five, and we're going to land the plane. Are you receiving? Yes. 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 I have to label this because this for me is foundational. Yes. I can give you seven keys to this for you to, you know, but this is the founder, the why, the love of God. Yes. But watch this. Second Corinthians chapter five. from um, verse 17. In fact, let's just go to drop to down verse 14. Drop down to verse 14. This is Paul. Paul who killed Christians. He hated them, thinking he's doing God a favor. Then he encounters Jesus and he's radically transformed. Yes. And see what he writes. For the, the uh, what version is that? It's the King James. Can we move to NIV? We, we don't really have it. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, no, no, no. Uh, okay, that's fine. So I'm going to read it. Yeah, read it. Uh, I'm going to read it like that and then I'm just going to substitute the word. For the love of Christ constrains us. The other word is compels us. Yeah. In other words, it's an internal urge. Yes. Yeah. An 
internally moved, internally moved. It's more than just move. I am driven. It's yes. like a thrusting. Yes. yes. It's a compulsion. Yes. The love of God. Not I'm trying to please God. I'm trying to. He says, just the love of God inside of me. Yes. The love of Christ compels me. Yes. And watch this. Because we judge. Watch this. If one died for all, then all died. He's talking about the world. Yes. He said, if Christ died for the entire world, then in God's book, let me put it plainly, the world has already paid for their sins. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hmm. Um, let's see, we see it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Their sins have already been atoned for. Yes. They, I'm not talking about Crossway Ministries and the Baptist churches and uh, all the other evangelical guys. I'm talking about the world. Watch this, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Can you put it up? Can we read it together? One, two, three, let's go. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Next verse, please. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Jesus. Just stop there so you have a ministry. Hallelujah. Every person in this church yes. has got a ministry. A ministry is a ministry of reconciliation. Amen. That's good. Yes. Now, you can be called as a pastor, as a prophet, and all of that, but that one. Every believer is recorded. Yeah. Next one, please. Next verse. To wait or to consider is another word. Or to think. Like just to grasp. That's what it is, right? Just watch it. Read it. And God is in Christ. Christ Reconciling the world unto himself. Stop, 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 stop. Yes. Read that again. To wait that God is in Christ. Reconciling the world unto Is he going to reconcile them? No, he's not going to reconcile them. Just in case we don't get it. That's why I like the more modern version, the NIV, so that we understand it in, in, in our language. So they're, just, they're just not imputing. Go ahead. Not, not in the their trespasses unto them. So let's read this really together again. To wit that God was in Christ. That, that already is major. So on that cross, yes. that was God. Right. Yes. Number one, number two. When he was on that cross, this is the work that he was doing. He was reconciling the world to himself. How? Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Why? Because he was imputing it to Jesus. Yes. There was an exchange. Yes. Woo, no. <laughs> the guilty were they were imputed righteousness. Yes. Right standing. It's not that they deserve it. They cannot earn it. It's a legal transaction of imputing. In other words, it's you are considered. Yes. You are regarded in the eyes of the law. All the requirements of justice has been satisfied. Amen. Even though you are guilty, sir, and deserve to die, the punishment that is due to you I will now confer on your substitute. Hallelujah. Everything that is due to you. Death, destruction, separation from.
from God. Yes, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken yes. me? That is separation. Even that was imputed on your sacrifice. Hallelujah. On your substitute. He was reconciling, let's read that again, the world unto himself, not imputing or counting their trespasses unto them. And here is the second oh, thing. Oh, that's that so good here. right there. Oh, my God. He's given, committed to us, the what? Word. The word of reconciliation. Oh, Just in case we don't get it, he makes it clear even the next verse. Oh, hallelujah. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador doesn't speak for himself. That's right. An ambassador of the United States to South Africa represents the president of the United States. When he walks into that nation, he's on official business. He doesn't speak what he speaks. He doesn't give or she doesn't give her opinions. They speak on behalf of the President of the United States. Yes. 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 When they open their mouth, it is as if the President is speaking. Amen. Yes. Yes. He is saying, you are in that role as an ambassador for Christ, in the place of Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. In other words, if Christ was here in person, this is what you would have done. As though God is, the, 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 the plain English, is begging the yes. world through us. Yes. Beseech us to beg, please. Watch this. We pray you. In Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. Oh, right. Oh, Next verse. Oh, Last one. Oh, because he made him to be sin for us. Would you know sin? That we might be made. Will become the righteousness of God. Thank you, Jesus. This is the message of the cross. That we have a substitute. Yeah. And all of this God decided in eternity. Why? Because He loves us. I want to give you secondary reasons. Bear with me for a few more moments. Secondary reasons why we must be soul winners. The first is, it's the call of the disciple. There's a difference between being just a Christian and being a disciple. Yes. Yeah. There are many people. Remember, if you if you want to be, if you want to become a Christian or or born again, you want to accept the free gift of salvation. That's it's got nothing to do with your works. It's everything to do with what Jesus did on the cross for yeah. us. Yes. Yeah. But to be a follower of Christ. Hallelujah. Requires to deny yourself. Yes. Take up your cross and follow. Oh, hallelujah. And the first thing that Jesus said to disciples Follow me, and I will what? Make you a fisher of men. Are you a disciple? Yes. If you are a disciple, then the question is. Are you a father of men? I mean, are you a fisher of men? Yes. Because every disciple who follows Jesus, Jesus will lead them to the harvest. The second reason, we want to obey the great commandment to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And you know how God spells love? How God sees, he, he, how, how he sees love how I love him, how he sees that, he sees it through my obedience. Amen. So these are the second reasons. I love God. And so he says, first commandment, to love God with all your heart. The second commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If I love myself, do I want to go to hell? No. So he says, love your neighbor like you love you. And if I have true love for my neighbor, I would not want them to go to eternity without yes. yes. Number four, Great Commission. It's what Jesus gave us. Yes. 
The fifth reason, we can, and I will, I will send these notes to, to Pastor, we can hasten the coming of the Lord. I want you to read this. We can hasten the coming of the Lord. Peter says, let me just find the scripture. Peter chapter 3, verse 12. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. <clears throat> Have you seen that scripture before? Amen. Looking for and hastening the coming of the Lord. Do you know that we as the church can speed up the second coming of Christ? Do you know why? Because of <clears throat> the last sign that must be fulfilled in Matthew 24 um, verse 14. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the ends of the earth as a sign to all nations then the end of the world. If we speed up the preaching of the gospel, if we speed up the process of soul winning, and every person is saved, there's no reason for Jesus to tarry. Come on. So those are reasons why we must be soul winners. Also, souls are valuable. What will profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? That's right. But I believe the most important motivation why is love. Someone asks us to close your eyes. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we minister your word today, I thank you for fruitful soil. Your word says the entrance of your word brings light. Amen. Cause your people, Lord, to move in all that you have for us. And that, Lord, we will give you the reward for the suffering of your soul. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay. Are we going to take about a 10-minute break? Let's say up to 8.15. And then um, my wife is going to come up and she's going to close us out. Okay? okay. Stretch your legs. Come on, let's give it a Thank you, Jesus.